once again, the Where You At show. Go ahead, we're gonna jump right into it. Introduce yourself, let them know where we at. All right, again, William Burgess here. Uh, the address is 1712 Fleet Street. Uh, we are the Fells Point Culinary Incubator. Uh, been up and running since 2017, right in the heart of Baltimore. All right, give us a little backstory of what led you to your decision to open this spot and, you know, for you to even be opening the opportunity for other businesses to have an outlet. Okay, is this a PG show or X-rated? Like, can I use any language I want to? Go all the way in, bro. Okay. We uh, in Baltimore City. All right, well, the reason I'm here is because my entire family is from Baltimore City. You know, I was raised in New York, um, so this was my give back to my mother's city, the city that birthed my mother, born in John Hopkins Hospital. They grew up on Howard Street, and I've always came here for family reunions. Baltimore was just a place for the hub, the gathering of family, the love. Um, I found Fells Point a couple of years ago. I didn't know Fells Point was a thing. I was always brought to West Side Baltimore. I didn't know that there was even mixed communities, waterfront, dogs walking. I didn't know any of that about Baltimore. Just some cousins drove down here one day for a weekend and it felt like Williamsburg, Brooklyn to me. And I was in, in route to transfer uh, this incubator model from New York to uh, Baltimore. Uh, and I, I felt good about Fells Point. I understand. Uh, I understand the history of slaves coming through Fells Point, the impact that that had, and I just came here to bring the love and the energy into an entrepreneurial way. You know, I've been uh, an entrepreneur, an ambitious thinker, um, hustle, ma hustle mathematics, um, I'm an educated black man, and I'm just here to to develop weak minds, pretty much. All uh, right, you say educated. Give a little uh, background of your education. Okay, well, um, I have an extensive background in uh, computer technology, uh, computer science, IT. Um, I used to develop patents for uh, billion dollar companies for years. And that's where I got a lot of my uh, confidence from as far as being able to help others you create. Uh, because sometimes you, you, know, like you may have a gift that friends and families don't see or don't know how to support or give you accolades to push you further. So it's usually strangers that cheer you on and make you feel like you can make a dent into the society. So uh, having that uh, engineering mindset, uh, state allows me to uh, help other people build. It allows me to take the reference of being from, from nothing to something, from being around everyone of all races and being able to adapt to any situation to empower. So it really, that's what education is about. Now, when most people hear entrepreneur, they just usually see somebody that's doing their own thing. But usually with entrepreneurs, their journey is kind of is kind of really up and down. So give them give them a couple of the downs in your journey. Okay, well, I'm gonna say this that the word entrepreneur uh, means a lot of different things to to many people. Like I'll give an example. So when you think of entrepreneurs, especially in the United States of America, you are competing against the best people in the world. People. Under, underestimate the immigrants that come over here. They underestimate uh, people that don't look like them. But as a black man or woman, we are competing against the best in the world. Because these immigrants come over here, they don't come over here with, with, with no education. They come over here sometimes with two degrees. They come over here with, with no money and a doctorate that they will earn from a uh, country or small university that we've never heard of, but they're coming here to win. And it's really about uh, mental capacity, 
how much pressure can you take? You know, how much, how many beat downs can you accept? You know, how many things can be taken from you and you still move forward? You know, how many, how many times can you share your dream just to be put down? So it's really a, a mental journey. It, it's, it's mental health of, of, of trying to be financial um, stable. So what make what what makes you want want to open this opportunity for other people? What makes you want to help people? Okay, well, I've been a giver all my life. I'm an only child, no brothers, no sisters. So I've always been giving. I've always been giving to my friends. Either cooking breakfast for them, um, the first dude in your crew to have a car, to take cats to Manhattan, the clubbing. You know when when the tunnel was popping in New York, and you know, for my old school heads, when a club called um, Home Base was rocking in New York, this was early hip hop days, uh, or just putting my other brothers on game. So I've always had an advanced way of thinking about things, and I've always came up with the latest ways of getting money, or, or new ways of doing things, and I've always put my people on game. I've always tried to help them level up. So I've always been a giver, always been a helper. Uh, so this this business model is like my own platform for me to share my ideas with the world. Um, so I look at this as um, a way for people to grow in something that they have naturally in them. And most people thrive through food or beverage. That's the first thing that they experiment at home. That's the first thing that they can actually afford to do. And that's the first journey in entrepreneurship when it comes down to food and beverage. All right, so where do you see yourself in the future with your business? Uh, uh, hopefully, um, people peak game and duplicate what I'm doing. You know, this is just uh, a blueprint of helping people in a different way and I hope as many people see this video they duplicate it. They go out in their own hoods, their own neighborhoods, their own communities, they find a building and they load it up with some tools to empower other people. It's just like our billionaire host said, you know, we try to give the people the tools and a lot of communities used to have access to garages. They were able to go in the garage and use that as a think tank with their friends in the neighborhood and build something. Well, when you're in inner cities, there aren't no garages. There aren't any places that are hubs for people with broken language, no education, uh, to go and feel comfortable and try to build a business. There are exceptional business um, platforms and accelerator programs out there, but certain folks aren't going to feel or even be welcomed or even fill out the application to even kind of get into that realm of developing around these types of individuals. Um, so I just hope that I can continue growing, uh, people will continue duplicating, and within the next five years I see myself expanding this model over to at least three other cities. Um, currently we are building another incubator and West Side, Baltimore, uh, 21223 zip code. That's the poorest zip code probably in the nation, but especially in Maryland. And this incubator is all about beverages. So I got about fifty to sixty thousand dollars worth of juice and equipment in there to allow people to experiment, uh, create different formulations, um, and just bring health to their people. All right. So for anybody that's interested. One more time, just give them your contact information. Okay, well, let's go with the website. Um, that's uh, www.fellspointculinaryincubator.com. The address is 1712 Fleet Street. If you go to the website, you'll get all my information. You, you'll get my bio, you'll get my social media links, you'll get my services, you'll get the pictures, you'll get the big picture. Um, again, my name is William. I'm an open book. Come out loud. Man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your vision. And for anybody to see this, I know this would be very inspiring. And, uh, and you know, you open the doors for them to also have an opportunity and a platform to expand their minds first, then their business. So I want to thank you for your time. This is the Where You Ask Show, and we signing out. Peace. Everything over here is about CBD, hemp, Sour sauce, tonics, tinctures.
pictures, teas. So as you see everything in here is about helping your body get well. You see the tonics, the main ingredient is sour sap, it chases the toxins out of your body, black seed oil that we import from Egypt, uh, purple tea that we import from Kenya. 50% of the products over here are handmade. It's all about helping others. Over here is our grab and go counter. So we have many food companies that pop in. They can either grab it to go or they can sit here at the counter. These are some of our signature cold pressed juices. We're the only black owned cold pressed juicing bottling facility in Baltimore City. What that means is that we have hydraulic presses that apply about 10 to 4 to 10 pounds of pressure onto the fruit. So there's no heat involved in the extraction of the juice. Keep it healthier for a cellular level, for your body to digest, quicker way to get enzymes and minerals without having to activate your digestive system to make it work. Pure energy, pure fuel. This is our grab and go refrigerator. We allow different brands to place their beverages in the refrigerator as our second level after working out of our commercial beverage facility, which is at another location on the west side of Baltimore. But after they make the beverages, then they have an opportunity to sell it. So we have a, a full solution. And just because you can make something, you don't want to be held hostage to a farmer's market. You want to come into an incubator to actually make money as well. This is just another maker's room. People come in here to set up their businesses, operating on these tables. This is another beverage room or a food room. So as a, as a Baltimore city regulated um, location, you have to have a lot of stainless steel, a lot of stainless steel tables, uh, three-day sinks. So we give tables to individual brands to allow them to experiment, as I call it, the sandbox theory. You know, you have to get it right, you got to fail to win, but at least you are doing it with low risk and not a lot of money involved. Let me show you the back. So this is our backyard. We set it up for barbecue companies that may want to just set up uh, for the weekend, for the week. They may think about uh, getting a food truck. They may be thinking about getting their own barbecue restaurant. This is a great way of testing out their menu. What we do is we provide them two streams of income. We uh, help them create a menu. You put the menu up front. We have a man on deck doing samples. And then you have your first stream, which is walking traffic, people from the street, which is free from social media marketing. And then the second stream is we help you create a virtual restaurant, which is connecting you to Grubhub or Uber Eats because we're a food facility. So you can have a, a minimum of 10 items on their platform and have two streams of income. So it's not just about uh, failing, but it's about taking small wins and accumulating them to build up confidence in business. We can go. So this is our community social lounge. As you see, we have a little bar set up here for our juice tastings, private events, bring your own bottle events. This is where people come have great conversations, um, talk about uh, what's going on in the community, um, have their customers up here for social hours, after night, weekend hours. It's all about getting together, building with like-minded individuals and this space was created for such. Over here is just another test area for people to come in and test their food menus and we can go upstairs.
guys, so this is our podcasting and studio third floor room. Uh, we partnered up with a, a good brother, Prophet, uh, from Prophet Productions. Um, I have an old saying, teamwork makes the dream work. He's another like-minded brother, so we can decide to clap on this space of minds up here so we can both have an outlet, you know, to have our verses heard, make affordable things happen for brands to extend their message. Because just because you got a good food or product, people are walking in, you still need other platforms to get the message out. So this is why this is true. That's cool, bro.